Dear parishioners, we're coming to you from the Rectory Chapel. I just wanted to give you a little update on what's going on. We're all doing well. We're all in good health. Thanks be to God. Uh, I know we don't get to see you much at all anymore, but uh, we're, we're doing well. Uh, parish is functioning well. I just wanted you to know. I had a funeral this Saturday, so we're still burying the dead. Uh, I had a baptism on Sunday. It was small, uh, but we're still growing. Uh, the family is growing in number. Uh, I just want to direct you too to our website. We've got a lot of, uh, we've got a beautiful website. Our staff has done a, a fantastic job. Go there and check out uh, you can live stream the Mass. You may already know this, um, but there's rosary stations and a lot of other interesting stuff on there. So, um, and also let us know if there's new ways, other ways that we can reach you. Um, but anyway, just wanted to quick give you a little bit of information on what's going on locally. We had our first Sunday, so things are a little bit weird. It was a weird, uh, it was a very awkward weekend for us, as you can imagine, I'm sure for you too. Uh, but throughout this week and in the weeks ahead, we'll continue to give you some ideas on how you can stay active. And we encourage you to still make those visits to the, to the church uh, so long as we can. Uh, and we'll talk just in a second about spiritual communion. Uh, Father Gardner was out working uh, today, this Monday, uh, visiting our sick. And so, how was that going? Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen the hospital parking lot so empty in my entire life and so many restrictions there. So I know that people aren't, aren't going there unless they absolutely need to. But... Uh... Glad to visit with our parishioners and, uh, you know, if anybody uh, has a loved one who, who needs a visit, um, that's what we're here for. You know, we're uh, glad to come and bring uh, anybody who's sick uh, Holy Communion or to hear confessions and uh, to especially give the, the anointing of the sick. So glad, Father, to be yeah. able to do that for anybody who's in need here. Right. And that's a great point. You know, <laughs> things are different now, but we're not stopping. The, the work of salvation, the sacramental life. Uh, has a different form, but especially in those places of need for the sick and yeah. the suffering, we're still we're still going. And then we want to make just one word about a, a spiritual communion. I were just absolutely ed edified about the by the number of people who have tuned in for our live feeds uh, and also watched throughout the day the masses that's being recorded. Uh, as you've probably seen, those of you who have checked it out, we we pause after communion, make it an act of spiritual communion, and we've got some cards. I'm gonna. Uh, Try and get them available to you, or maybe in the church, but also on our website. You should be able to click on it, so you can have it ready before you, before you uh, log in for the live stream or watch the mass. But the question's been asked: but What's this whole spiritual communion thing about? Father, we're not used to it because we're all sac we're very sacramental. Well, as you know, the sacraments, that great gift of Jesus to His bride, as a means of sanctifying grace, they give us certainty. Right? That's why we love him so much is because Jesus told us to do it. We're doing it. And he says, if you do that, I'll be with you. So what happens now then? Uh, we have a theological expert with us. <laughs> uh, spiritual communion. How does it work in the whole realm of, of sacramental econ yeah, economy? It's one of the beautiful kind of renewals in this bad situation is that we rediscover treasures of the church. And spiritual communion is a very traditional uh, part of the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. But of course, the, the source and summit of our faith is reception and offering the Holy Eucharist, which is still going on, by the way, on and behalf of the people, on behalf of the people and by the priests uh, for the people. So that's still actually going on. And of course, it's not as uh, fulfilling to see it online, but you still can make that spiritual communion. And for various reasons, because the sacraments are very concrete, which is the beauty of the sacraments, they're also available uh, uh, concrete roadblocks to receiving the sacraments, and we know this in our own life, from even kind of something simple as you ate too close to communion and you're not mm -hmm. able to receive that day. Mm -hmm. Now you know uh, that you can make a spiritual communion, which the church has always taught, but now we're kind of just experiencing that on a more corporate level um, in history, in mission territories. Even the Pope mentioned that you know Catholics who are impeded from the sacrament of reconciliation can... Uh, make an act of perfect contrition. Well, that's something new. That's, mm -hmm. that's as old yeah. as, you know, the, the church itself. So, of course, God is bound to the sacraments. That's what we all desire to have the sacraments available to us. But because of concrete problems with the practical experiencing those sacraments, God isn't, isn't impotent. He's powerful. Mm -hmm. And we have that power through our baptism to receive him uh, in a powerful and real, very real way. So there's nothing to be afraid of about well uh, this time. It's, it's not ideal, but God is still active, and that spiritual communion prayer is so beautiful. It's, it's, it's not written a week ago. Like, this is a, a, a core aspect of our faith, and it's, we're not embarrassed of that as well. Yeah, beautiful. Well said. You know, that when we act, we've been 
designated by the bishop, who by the apostles, by the pope, you know, to act and when the priest acts, God does. He's promised us that, but as you said, so beautifully throughout the history of, of the Catholic Church, God has also revealed us the ways that he acts without simply the sacraments. Um, so well said. And I like to use it, not, we're not being punished. Whoops, I, I had a cup of coffee with creamer and sugar. And I didn't see the time, and then we, so we can't receive because we broke the fast. God's not going to punish us and say, well, then you can't have me. He said, you can't have me sacramentally, and that's fine, understandable, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to come to you. Mm -hmm. Powerfully, truly, really. Uh, so we encourage you to make acts of spiritual communion. Come into the church, kneel before the Blessed Second. We hope that the, the, the longing for the Eucharist we have right here with us, uh, that longing is, is growing, you know, but that needs to be resolved in a beautiful way by calling him into your hearts. Uh, and we look forward to that day, not hopefully too far away, where we can be distributing communion. We miss it. We miss having you there. Uh, the Mass is a very different reality uh, without you, so we've been we missing you. We ask you just to keep us in your prayers uh, as we work through these days, and certainly know of ours, and please continue to support us uh, financially. We're going to try and find some ways so that can be still a normative, normative part of your lives, uh, you know, so we can carry on the mission. Uh, it may look like we're not doing much, but we've been working busy behind the scenes at the school, here at the hospitals, uh, to try and find ways to reach you. So we're going to continue to do that, and we thank you for your support. And as the days go on and boredom sets in, well, you can be expecting a few more of these videos. We hope you don't mind, but just a chance for you to see us and us to address you. And as some things come up, like spiritual communion, other questions, uh, hopefully we can give you a little something, a nugget to take away with. But in the meantime, we'll see you and we'll meet you at the altar, even if only spiritually. God bless you. Be well.